All right, welcome back to another stream for Unreal uh, with CG Spectrum. And uh, this week I'm a little late because I've been trying to get my Unreal installed. I'm trying to get the new 4.26 installed that uh, just as I sat down here, I'm like, oh, look, it just got released. And then I'm like, I got just enough time to get that installed and set up. Uh, and then I also found out my my music playing app is like totally changed. So now I have to reinstall a new app thing. That I don't even know. I'm just I'm just like well, I can't get to that. So no music today because <laughs> I didn't have enough time for that. That surprise. Uh, so a couple surprises already today. Anyway, so with the 4.26, uh, it gives us a chance to try out and look at the new features, which is uh, something that I like. You know, I was gonna wanted to do eventually. Uh, once it got released anyways, so um, I've just it just finished verifying and installing like You know <laughs> minutes ago, so uh, We're good to go for that. I think we'll see what happens when I actually run it um, I may actually just run. Let's see if we can just run the version of project that we normally run oh And also uh, forgot to open up my I'm such in a rush to get this <laughs> stream going today <laughs> so let's get the chat going here so I can see if anybody's talking to me and if anybody chats to me today feel free to welcome to say hello um, okay oh here we go I got uh, Sarah's like you're gonna love 4.26 so um, missed, I almost missed that comment and uh, yeah so Sarah's already been playing with it uh, for a while here on um, during the um the preview yeah the preview for it so uh hey marcus is here welcome get rid of that 4.25 yeah so marcus has been complaining to me as well about how terrible 4.254 is so that uh <laughs> so he's there's a relief maybe or maybe there's gonna be more problems we'll see rushback's here welcome thank you thanks for coming back rushback um and a big lava goo is here always reliable uh, these guys very good. Thanks for showing up as well um, So uh, Basically before I found out um, Rushback's in two streams. I'm in two streams now, right? Uh, excellent Is that like two CG spectrum streams during the week or like literally? Talking in two streams at the moment and we have a uh, foot lick. Wow. That's a tough one So hello there as well. Welcome um, so what I was going to say was, uh, my plan today was to, uh, make some snow because <laughs> I got to get rid of this background. I like had a huge snowfall at our house two days ago and it's, I've been shoveling driveways and it doesn't feel at all appropriate that I have this nice autumn backdrop anymore. So I really wanted to get my new backdrop in this week. Uh, but <laughs> we'll see. So anyway, snow snow particle effect was kind of a, an idea I had, and then 4.26 just showed up, so we've got a new plan here. Um, we'll see if we can integrate it. I've got time to kill, so should we get it? Oh, Rushback says the one with Spectra, uh, her personal Twitch. Wow, I didn't know she had a personal Twitch. That's awesome. She does the Twitch on sun Saturdays and also has her personal one. Very good. Spectra is definitely becoming... Uh, rapidly a, a much more active mentor with us. She's just picking up lots of intakes. Sarah says, you need my hubby there to snowplow with a snowplow. <laughs> oh, I didn't know he had a snowplow. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I needed a snowplow there last on that snowfall there. That was, it was crazy. It was all sticking to the trees and everything. Uh, rush back. She has no idea about Twitch. Okay, so she's just figuring it out as she goes. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's like me, like a few months ago. <laughs> uh, Eli! Yay, Snow! Welcome, Eli. Uh, Sarah, what's... what's That's what he does? Oh, he's a snowplow guy in winter. Very good. Big Lava Goo, I have kids to have to use as a snowplow. <laughs> one day, one day I will be able to use my kids as a snowplow as well. Looking forward to that. Actually, to be fair, they were out there with little shovels doing a fair bit of work, so, you know. Small steps. Uh, Marcus says, I hated living in the snow 
without a snowblower plow. <laughs> yeah. I like to think it's the only physical activity I ever get <laughs> all week. I'm like, yeah, it's hard, but, you know, I gotta do physical activity eventually, so. Rushback says, that's Simon still. Oh, I missed the joke there. It must have been something silly I said, because that's what I always do. Um, Sarah says, my 4.26 is updating. I guess it's going to be, it's going from preview to proper version. They're probably going to give you a whole nother version. Preview usually is kind of like an isolated separate thing. Um, but maybe not. Maybe it's updating. I mean, I, to be fair, I never installed the preview one, so I, I could be completely wrong there. Gavin, welcome. Boy, we got a whole crowd here. This is great. Uh, use a whip on them. <laughs> is that how it works, Gavin? Is that what you do with your guys, your girls? Just kind of... <laughs> this is probably not good advice. Sarah says, hey Gav! Alright. <laughs> uh, I remember Gavin was like, had a, had a video of, of one of her, of his daughters doing controller, playing video games extremely well with a controller. And I was like, that's insane, how do you do that? And then, um... And then now I got kids that are like five and three, and they're they're both playing video games with controllers really well. So I'm like, yeah, I guess that's uh, doesn't take long for them to pick that up. All right, so let's see here. Let's see if we can get uh, an actual 4.26 launched. I was supposed to um, supposed to get my workforce open here. Where did it go here? Oh yeah, I opened Pretzel. Um. Okay. <laughs> Gav doesn't get snow. <laughs> That's a good point. What are you talking about, Gavin? You're in Australia. It's like for the uh, sandstorms. For the ashes from the wildfires. Oh, that's, that's a sad joke. Um... All right. We gotta open up, uh, what are we doing? Backdrop, I guess? That's what we wanna do? Yeah, we gotta get to there. So, oh, shoot, I wanted to change it to the 2.6 version. We gotta do that through the uh, right click and change. Kevin says, can't see the Twitch chat at the moment. I think Sarah says, good day. Oh yes, right, sorry, I'm actually reading it out for you. That's the only way that you know. Uh, good day. <laughs> I'm in the brewery brewing. Ah, uh, yes, of course. That is an excellent pastime. Sarah says, it did snow in Tasmania on the second day of summer. No kidding. Wow. Is, that sounds unusual, right? Like, that's got to be weird, right? Maybe not. Um, I know Tasmania is not very, it's very south. And Sarah's, I'm on YouTube. Oh, okay. And I'm reading it through um, Restream Chat, which allows me to see everybody at once. But it should still actually be sending it through to the other channels, but maybe not. Yeah, on Twitch, it's it's picking up everybody's feeds. Gavin says, is Sarah talking? Oh, <laughs> rock hard buns again? <laughs> you guys. Of course. Sarah says, not really. It has snowed on Xmas before. That's funny. <laughs> Sarah says, you wish, Gav. I feel like I'm the middleman in this conversation here. All right. Um, we got the backdrop. Oh, yeah, I was going to switch it up. So I'm going to switch the Unreal version to 4.26. Error, could not have set association for the project. Check that it's writable. Oh yeah, it's probably not writable because it's a perforce file. Gotta check it out. So, switch Unreal Engine to 4.26. Give her a go. See, it's probably gonna recompile all the shaders. It always does that whenever it switches Unreal Engine version. So we'll probably be sitting there going, Oh yeah, and my stream might crash. Hmm, yes, maybe I should try and rescue that. Hmm, let's see if I can do this in time. OBS. Put my cup, my tea down for a sec here. Uh, 
Sometimes it crashes, sometimes it doesn't. And maybe it's a feature in the 4.26 is like, doesn't take over your whole computer. All right, there. We'll see if that fixes it or not. Okay, so what else are we gonna do while we're waiting for this to load? This actually was something I hadn't considered was that it might take a long time to open my backdrop file. Oh, I know what I can talk about. Okay, so um, for the theory on the snow while we're waiting, uh, oh, oh, you know what I should do is check the uh, check the updates on 4.26. Uh, like in terms of, is there release notes and stuff? There it is. We'll go through that while we're waiting. I was gonna talk about some ideas I was gonna do for the snow. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to create snow from scratch, but I think what we can do is find some, I know there's a, one of the free assets has a nice snow particle and um, I was gonna bring it in, take a look at it, think about it, and then maybe use it to, uh, uh, <sighs> There. Now, Gash <laughs> is commenting on Gavin, which is uh, hilarious because we all know that's the same person. Gavin guy's a creep, although he has, does have rock hard buns. It's always about the rock hard buns. Sarah says, uh, I want to play with the new cloud system. Oh, yeah, the new cloud system. Oh, yeah, I got it right here in front of me. Um, yeah, I forgot that that was going to come out in the 4.26. Oh yeah, and this little short is very impressive. Oh, it's actually using the rig in t inside of Unreal. I didn't realize they did the animation with a rig inside of Unreal at the time. That's insane. Is that Weta that did that? I think that was who it was that was advertising that. And then we have fur. Is there actually like a fur option that you can just turn on now? Man, man, what a crazy... Let me just go back a sec. I'm not reading the bottom here. Production ready hair and fur. Insane. And animations and sequencer using the... No need to use external tools. That's amazing that that would be like so finished already. I don't know. I really feel like there's going to be like a, a ramp up before that's actually production ready. But whatever. We'll find out in a sec. Some crazy cloud and sky stuff here. I mean, this is funny how it's just like, yeah, this is amazing. More amazing stuff. Lots of amazing things going on here. I don't even know what that was. It was like a curve that was... Influencing it. Display sport for large LED volumes. Water system. Yeah, that was the only thing I was remembering was the water system. Remote control API preset. Easily provide users with the ability to quickly change. There was an interesting discussion I had this week about um, Rizwan Animation. Hi. Hello. Welcome. Um, there was uh sorry I was trying to say something here oh we had an interesting conversation with uh Justin uh Malone Molman who um who works at Epic and uh he was really emphasizing how there's a lot of like virtual production opportunity and jobs happening right now where there's a lot of need and a lot very few people that know anything about it so it's like this huge vacuum that's happening where all these production studios are trying to do it, but it's just a tiny handful of people that actually know what's going on with that whole process. And not to mention they have to like, you know, understand how to use Unreal, which is a learning curve on its own, let alone um, just the, the, the difference in how you do uh, virtual backdrops. Riz says, would you like to see my YouTube channel? Hmm. I I don't know. <laughs> what what are you asking? I don't think you'll be able to send a link if that's what you're trying to do. Uh 
Um, what's this about, by the way? Collaborative viewer template enhancements. Collaborative viewer template project helps users. And this is too fast for me to read. Helps users create multi-user VR design reviews. Okay. What's this one? I better pause it. Oh, I can't pause it. Movie render queue enhancements. Output render passes, including mat IDs, camera motion vectors, Z depth. I thought we always could do Z depth. We just did it in our one of our streams. Ambient occlusion, reflections, and more. I guess they're maybe just. The interface looks a little different. Movie render queue enhancements. Okay. Maybe they've just made it better. Maybe they've matched it more to like a film pipeline. This is another interesting job, which I think I've talked about in the past, where just outputting footage from Unreal into a render pipeline is a new workflow. Oh, is this in... Um... Whoa, 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 whoa. What are we doing here? Is that still Unreal? Or is this like Nuke or something? This is a really massive interface change here. I feel like we've gone to Nuke or something. I can't quite tell what it says at the top. And I don't know what Nuke's interface looks like. Okay, so I see we've got all these uh, light objects are separated in the render pass. Oh, that's cool. If I was a compositor, I might understand that, but I really don't have a clue. Okay, so let's go through and see these things more individually. Since I'm still only at 39% <laughs> opening my backdrop. Man, I uh, underestimated how long that was going to take to load. Uh, more convincing animated characters. Christina! Hello! Catching a stream! Welcome! Hello, hello, hello! Uh, Riz, I feel like you're you're advertising your uh, your YouTube channel. I just it's just I'm, I'm throwing that out there. I just kind of get that sense. Uh, more convincing animated characters. If you uh, if you're creating convincing animals. Oh, groom editor. Let me just read that more carefully here. Be able to simulate and render true strand-based fur, hair, fur, feathers is a must. I'm going to ask a groom editor for setting up properties. Compatibility with features. Depth of field. Fog. Wow. LED generation is built in. Ability to generate cards and meshes for lower end hardware in engine as experimental feature. Whoa, that's crazy. So like you add the fur and then, you know, depending on what kind of hardware you have on your computer, you're either going to get like hair cards or like this crazy awesome detailed fur. And if it's LOD automatically as well, then it'll just run. Man, that's crazy. Uh, a character's move is obviously more important than their be believability. Possible to create animations in sequencer by blending animation clips such as motion capture data. The workflow will be familiar to animators who've worked with non-linear animation editors. I assume that's like motion builder. Animators who can preview skeleton animations easily see how one skeleton blends into the next. And match joint placement. Ah, match joint placement. That's a big one. See, this is actually making it very competitive to Motion Builder. Um, 
The feature is integrated with Control Rig and now offers an experimental full body IK solution in addition to the standard FK IK. The, the, wait a minute, the, I thought the feature was Control Rig, but I guess it's just. How do they explain it then? What is this? Is it another tool? Is it a feature within Sequencer? Must be. It's integrated with Control Rig and now offers an experimental full body IK solution in addition to a standard FK IK. Wow, there is so much stuff to learn right there, just in that one paragraph. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness. We got a lot of learning to do here. It sounds great though. I mean, that's really like fundamentally amazing for animators and like game changing for the industry, I would think, if it works well. Like it really does make like a lot of softwares that specifically try to make that pipeline work um, seem a little less important now. Especially if you're like live linking it and, you know, working from um, raw mocap capture data and stuff, you can be editing it and fixing it inside of sequencer while you're seeing it in real time it's crazy uh, immersive natural worlds environments uh, create convincing natural there's no wonder there was like seven previews before this came out it's definitely uh <laughs> like this is a complicated update pretty amazing Uh, ability to create convincing natural environments that immerse uh, your audience is critical. 4.26, you can author, render realistic or stylized skies, clouds, and other atmospheric effects for full artistic freedom. Volumetric cloud component used with the sky atmosphere, skylight, and two directional lights, up to two directional lights. Atmosphere can receive volumetric shadows, bait, meshes, clouds, lighting, shadowing, updating. I'm fixed time of day. Okay. Affecting atmosphere lighting there in one place. Wow. It's a nice picture. I mean, from what I'm getting out of this, it's pretty cool. Definitely some interesting stuff there. Um, it, to really understand how that's different or enhancing pipelines is more like, you know, you'd have to really try it out and see what it's like. But it sounds really cool, especially, I guess, just mostly the cloud thing. Uh, new water system, enabling to find grid. Um, So, built-in fluid simulation enables characters, vehicles, weapons to interact with the water. Fluid responds to the terrain. This is reflecting ripples off the shore and reacting to river flow maps. That's amazing. Virtual production tool sets. We've been continuing, continually expanding to enhance our virtual production tool set. Uh, LED volumes are getting larger and larger to support higher number of pixels required with existing hardware. Leverage technology such as NVIDIA's NVU link, enabling data to be transferred between two GPUs at very high speed. Enables any viewport to be rendered on another GPU. Wow. For example, one display facing GPU would render the entire scene while the other handles the inner frustrum, frustrum passing the pixels back to the first one. Don't quite understand that, but I can definitely see why having one GPU per viewport can be really useful when you're trying to do a virtual display. Uh, there's also a new fully REST compliant remote control API enables you to collect and organize any parameters or function libraries from the Unreal Engine UI into custom customizable presets. Not quite getting that. And like this, seamlessly connected to the widgets, radial dial slides, color pickers, 
I assume this is for the lighting. I should try that out with my lights here and see if there's any connection there. <laughs> it would be really cool if I could somehow use that. If that's what they're talking about. I guess they're probably influencing the exposure and the sky rotate of the virtual background so you can change that element in a very specific and simplified way rather than worrying about going in and rotating assets and all this stuff. So this would be your control panel, I guess, in a virtual production environment. This is on a web page, localhost. So interesting that it's uh, just a, a web interface that you're interacting with. So it's very, uh, I guess, exposed to be able to customize it easily. Um, oh, Christina says, ah, the water system looks amazing. Yeah, it does look amazing. I totally agree, 100%. Sarah says, I'm getting distracted from my essay, but this is totally worth it. <laughs> yeah, I agree. This is like Christmas here. We've got like amazing features. Like I've never seen a release that's been so like, uh, um, well, impressive, but also appropriate for everything that we're talking about in this particular type of stream. It is pretty pretty game changing, I would say, for uh, for just being one update. Uh, enhanced high quality media output used in Unreal 4.25. High quality media output. Movie render queue enables you to create high quality frames and accumulate accumulated anti aliasing motion blur for film, television, cinemax marketing. Stream the high resolution images for print. Hmm. So in the movie render queue, you can create high quality frames. It's good. I'll have to look into that. Riz, who does 3D software, 3D animation, is asking what software this is. <laughs> this is definitely Unreal 4. 4.26 to be specific. That's pretty much what the stream is about, um, but more specifically about artistic side of it. So we talk about animation, but we also talk about um, modeling and graphics and VFX and all the art elements. This release is possible to output render passes. Okay, so here's where we're doing the render passes again. Mat IDs, camera motion vectors, I really hope that they made this a lot simpler because I know even when I was just doing it in the last, the other stream there, it, I know from past experience, every time I've tried to do it, it's been like, I don't know, real hit or miss whether or not you're getting data that is any way rendered correctly. And then there would be like, if you closed the editor and you reopened it, it would suddenly work. It was just really buggy. So I'm hoping they kind of overhauled that and made it much more intuitive. And also with the render of this backdrop, I also discovered a bunch of weird like flashy glitches and it turns out motion blur um, when rendered it creates artifacts and issues and there's all these like weird command line scripts that you can do to, to disable it or minimize it. So I bet you they were addressing that as well so that it's a lot more, it's, it gives you the results you want without having to know all these weird switches you got to flip. Ah, Riz uses Lightwave 3D. All right, there you go. Uh, added support for open color, uh, both movie render queue and viewport. Ah, so you can use your... See, this is all stuff I don't... I'm not familiar with, because you just don't normally have that conversation when you're... Especially in the animation department. <laughs> But it's really neat to see that being firmly integrated into the Unreal Engine. It just goes to show really how... Okay. My OBS just suddenly closed. Not sure what that was all about, but... Hopefully I am back for everybody.
Um, I think it was me. Yeah, you're back. I'm back. Is that what that means? Yeah. All right. I had to do a little emergency. It was just my OBS that turned off. I don't know what that was all about. Okay. I'll just keep going as if I'm back. Looks like... All right. Marcus says looks like it's working again. So that is definitely the answer. Thank you for uh, confirming you two. It was good. All right. Here we go. So more effective collaboration design reviews. Um, oh yeah, so this is VR collaboration, which is always something we talk about, but man, I have zero experience of that. No idea what that's all about. <laughs> Just like, if you have two VR headsets, or even three, then you can try this out and see what the feature is like. Uh, these are a few highlights waiting for you, 4.26. Uh, virtual camera, completely new, completely new virtual camera system. Yeah, they usually go on and on and on and on and on and on. There's like thousands of other in information. I think we are getting pretty close to, it's at 95% my backdrop is loading. That might have been something to do with why uh, the whole uh, OBS disappeared. I don't know what, what why, but... Uh, <laughs> everybody thought it was you, uh, them, their own version, uh, connections. Now audience, Marcus is ordering 10 VR sets. That'll go nicely with your collection of printing, uh, 3D printing machines you have. <laughs> it's like, why buy one when you can buy two? Uh, and Mark says an omnidirectional treadmill. Omni oh yeah, right, those ones. <laughs> I'm not sure what to think about those omnidirectional treadmills. <laughs> I'm always like, like they've been around for like a long time, ever since like VR was kind of become popular. It's like, oh look, we've also got an omnidirectional treadmill. And then every time you look at it, you're like, really? That looks like a lot of work. You gotta like fake your own running. Well, my update is cleaning up. Oh, okay. That's for your uh, 4.26, I guess. Uh, Marcus says, still need one of those. All right. Yeah, one of everything. Oh, so speaking of buying stuff, I am actually very much getting serious about thinking about buying an iPad, um, iPad Pro, the one with the pencil that you can draw with. Um, my wife would really appreciate it, and... Uh, yeah, they're like, I don't know, they're like a thousand bucks or something. I haven't even really fully researched it very much. So it is kind of a big purchase that I don't usually just spontaneously buy things, especially Apple products. But in this case, uh, if I do get it, then we can do the uh, facial, real-time facial tracking so, uh, that they have and uh, pipe that into Unreal and see some do some facial stuff. Which I think that is a pretty good justification to buy it. And I'm I'm down with that. There's a lot of cool learning we can do there. And, uh, and we can talk about doing proper face targets and uh, play around with it, see what it's like, um, and give it a try. And then as a bonus, we get a iPad, <laughs> which, all right, sure. Marcus hates Apple. That's funny. And I'm, I'm not going to say I hate them, but I haven't in given them any money for a long time, so... I uh, I definitely don't uh, have a lot of luck with them, I guess. But Riz uses a MacBook Pro, which is cool. The new Macs, whatever they are, the the really small machines, I forget what the, the names of them are, they're supposed to be like really fast processors now that like compete with the big workstations, which I, I'm actually quite interested. That's very cool. It just goes to show there might be a big leap in technology for processing speeds and the fact that you can get a massive processing ability out of a small device is uh, is really interesting for where you know potentially iPhones will be um, and other small devices. Uh, Marcus says, "Why do they have all the apps I want?" <laughs> yeah, I kind of like. I have the same argument with that with a. PS5, it's like, oh, darn, I don't want to buy a PS5, but it has all these awesome games. It's 
That's how they get you. Mark says, you're right to <laughs> Right, hate was the wrong word. Hate was just too harsh. Christina says, Mac Minis. Oh yeah, that's probably what it is. Thank you for uh, identifying that. Gash says, I bought an iPad Pro for 3D sculpting away from home. Oh yeah, right, okay. Uh, okay, interesting. The only good thing to come out of this lockdown. <laughs> well, it sounds like it was a good experience. So. Uh, which is good. Works really well. Okay, good. That's what I want to hear. I mean, I don't want to spend that much money and then go, and, and it just collects dust in the corner because nobody really wants to use it. Which is what I'm really kind of worried about. Uh, Marcus says, how does it work? Oh yeah, there you go. That's the answer. Works really well. Uh, it's a laptop, but in a pad. Yeah. And they do have some pretty cool software, like there's special programs for 3D sculpting, there's special programs for uh, doing illustrations and drawing that are uh, specific to those uh, operating system so you do get a, a interesting selection you need to spend 200 bucks on the pen as well but it's worth it yeah if i'm gonna buy it, it it's it's for the pen because basically we're my wife wants to do illustrations and we have a cintiq in front of a computer but it never gets used because it's always in the wrong place at the wrong time um and so she was debating doing something like using that as a Cintiq, but um, we were kind of like, eh. Now it's like, oh, another argument for we should get it. Mark says, I meant the sculpting, not the iPad. How does that work? Oh, the sculpting. Oh yeah, right. Sculpting on an iPad. Same as I, Simon. It says Gash, the iPad and pen feels much better. Okay. Then a Cintiq. There you go. You have, uh, you've made a sale. <laughs> All right, what do we got here? Oh, this is making the river system. I'm still at 95% trying to open this backdrop. I don't know how long this is going to take. If it does actually open, I'll be so like, hey, we can see things. Probably have to compile all the shaders still after that. Um, my graphics... Gash says, my graphics screen sits rarely used. Yeah, right. That's mine too. Like, it's got dust on it, which, <laughs> which isn't a good sign. Because it has to be attached to a computer, and the computer has to be like a workstation. Well, it doesn't have to be a workstation, but it's just a lot of clumsy stuff, right? Like, if you want to just sit outside and do some illustrations, that's uh, really not an option. Riz asks, where are you? Are you asking where I am? I live near Toronto. That's Canadian area. That's where I live. I have a misleading backdrop of autumn fall leaf falling, but it's actually snowy and blustery. And um, we actually just got our Christmas tree today, which was the first time I got a real Christmas tree since I was, I don't know, a teenager or something, which was kind of fun. The kids really enjoyed it. But we had to. Um, Shake off the snow, because <laughs> it was a it was a classic snowy Christmas cutting adventure. It was actually very pretty. Brought the sled and everything. It was ridiculous. Uh, our system represents components. Uh, we're building rivers. Okay, I'll have to come back to that one. Water rendering, shading features. Oh wow, those are pretty caustics there. Underwater post-process material. Post-process is automatically applied based on a camera location. It also allows for partial submersion in water. Look, even the there's like uh, vertical. I don't know, God rays or whatever, coming down. It's amazing. And like, there's a thickness to the water here. Man. What are they doing to get that to look like that? It's insane. And then they got their clouds. I wonder if that's the cloud system up there as well. Specify transition between water body types that are material driven, such as the transition of flowing water river into a calm lake. 
Oh, I see. So it's coming in, and then there's a shoreline now over here that knows to draw it differently. Wow. Caustic generation tool to help you define and render your own caustic materials, which can be applied to shallow water surfaces. Man, oh man. I wonder how easy that is to get that going. It is such a pretty effect. Single layer water shading model that provides physical based water surface. Physical based water surface. Whoa. Yeah, that's amazing. One depth layer that supports refraction and user defined scattering, absorption, extinction, coefficients. And there's so many awesome things happening right there. <laughs> like the lighting, shading, the fact that it's like got caustics and there's refraction and distortion. <laughs> this is all happening in real time. Jeez. Uh, water body actors and editing. Oh, is it reflecting on the bottom of the ball? I don't think it is. Let me see here. Uh, maybe. Yeah, it's a little bit of blue refraction there. Uh, what do we got here? Riz says, my aunt lives in near Toronto. Have you been to the CN Tower? Yes, you bet I have. It's hard, uh, it's hard to n live here for this many years and, and not <laughs> not be they go up to the CN Tower. It is very cool. They're actually, there was in the news just recently, they were talking about taking the Sky Dome down, which is the big stadium right next to the CN Tower. And uh, it's now called the Rogers Center. And I think that's actually going to happen. So they're going to take it down. Sky Dome was this cool thing where it, like, the roof would automatically close and open. So you could, if it's raining, you could close the roof. They built it in the 80s. Um, but they're going to take it down and put a smaller one in so that it doesn't take up as much land so then they can build more houses or uh, condos and stuff. Uh, Sarah says, it's the water they use in Fortnite. Oh, do they? Right. This water here. Probably is. That's probably their motivation of why they wanted to implement this feature. Is this a Fortnite uh, preview here? Got that stylized look to it. Water bodies feature highly combust, composed, comp uh, customizable. Oh goodness, Gerstner wave simulation that can be used to create simple, complex wave surfaces, making simple and easy to look. Cool. Wow. Yeah, waves on waves. It's, it's, it's awesome. So good. And like, so amazing that it runs in real time. Uh, Sarah says, I read that Epic uses Fortnite to test Unreal before they release it. Yeah, I think that's how it's always kind of been with Unreal. I mean, I think it's a good strategy because you're, you know, you're you're um you're doing two things at once. You're getting you're, you're putting production money into the game project, and then your outcome is you get extra features for your engine. I remember when um back in the day with Unreal Three, it was uh they were building Unreal Three around how um the game that I can't remember because I can never remember things that they would make. I feel like I made this mistake before where I couldn't remember the game. Anyways, they would, um, they would build it to fit that game mode. And then if anyone ever wanted to use it in a different way, it was like not really built for that feature. So, um, I mean, I, I can't really blame them I, it, to be fair. That actually sounds like a smart move. Uh, you get some awesome features and you're getting good value for your production time on it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's nice that Fortnite has 
awesome water. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't expect Fortnite to be a water thing, but I guess eventually. Spine-based water uh, workflow. This is very nice, by the way, the way that water looks like it's coming down. Like, even the edges are being pulled and dragged in a very specific manner. That's really cool. Um, Sir says, when they brought in the new water features into the game, I guess they were going to add a water system at that point. Right, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Next time Fortnite brings out something, you can guess it'll probably come out in the future versions of Unreal. Also, the profits to Fortnite goes into the Create the Engine. Yeah, I bet it does. It also goes into us getting free assets and free games all the time. I bet you we got... Is there a new December... Uh, December month of assets free yet? Never checked. Oh, there is, yeah. So many awesome things today. Modular swimming pools. <laughs> like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are they using the new water for this? It, it would be unbelievably modern of them to do. I don't know. I guess I could read about it. I mean, you could just swap it out for the new water if it wasn't, I guess. I don't know if it says that there. Fully editable water material system. Not sure if that means uh, its own custom feature or what. Wow. Maybe my backdrop should be a swimming pool. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> or a change room. Wow, that's awkward. Uh... Uh, yeah, you haven't checked out the new free stuff. Always make sure you check the new free stuff because, uh, well, I mean, not that I'm worried about you, Sarah, but I'm just saying in general, everybody, don't miss out. It only goes free for a month. And I remember last December, uh, there was, like, free games that happened for, like, the last 12 days of Christmas or whatever, and I didn't know about that until, like, it was Christmas. <laughs> and I'm like, what? You mean there was a free game every day? So, totally missed that one. Uh, and they have a few portal teleportation blueprints. Right. Oh, perfect. Meshes and particles already scaled to the correct size. EP portal 1 out to 2. That's a nice looking portal effect. Oh, look at that. They even got the translation transition effect going on. Oh, I wonder if Bailey sees, is seeing this. He's probably like, oh, that's how you do it. Another student. We had to do a portal translation transition from one level to the next. Very good. These are really useful. What's this one? 200 grunge decals. Ah, oh, Christina. There you go. Except for you need snow. Hmm. I don't see any snowy ones. I see a lot of grunge ones, which is what it's labeled after, so it makes sense. But maybe you could just make it white, right? And then it would be like snowy frosty thing uh how do i go back here there we go all right they're all in cart in cart in cart let's uh do this check out i can't believe how generous epic sarah says i can't believe how generous epic games is for a com big company in this day and age to be honest yeah it's so unusual uh definitely not used to it either <laughs> never been in in this situation where you're like i just so much free stuff i, I don't know how, how do i deal with all this free stuff all the time 
It's never usually like that. It works great, though. I mean, even, like, the, the concept of the store, giving you free games all the time. Um, I mean, I'm definitely using the store to open games up about 50-50 to Steam, just because we've got a lot of cool games that are um, in the library that uh, that are just games you want to play, and you just, oh, I gotta go to... Um, I have to go to the Unreal Launcher to play my game. So, it's a pretty big investment, probably, but I think it's a pretty effective one. It's It's like, you know... One of the best ways to like make a splash, a splash, pun intended, uh, on the established marketplace. Interactive fluid simulation for character. I'm still waiting for this backdrop to load, by the way. 95%. It's ridiculous. Um, interactive fluid physics simulation that allows the character and object interaction on the water surfaces. I think what I can do is just open up a, another version of this backdrop in 4.25 and then actually do something. So if I run out of things to look for, <laughs> I'm just going to like bail. I mean, not necessarily bail, just let it load in the background, but I'll, uh, I'll make a copy of it. And we'll, um, we won't be able to look, look for the new, or no, I could just open up a new project with 4.26 instead of this giant one. That would probably be better. And then we can play with some of these features. Uh, movie renders. Oh, let's just do a little play here. Sorry if this is uh, going on forever here, but I'm I am actually really interested. Right now I have a lot of audio acoustics here and I can't turn it off. There's no way to turn the volume down. Not that you can probably hear my volume. I don't know if I have backdrop turned on. Oh, they're just explaining how to do it. All right, I'll turn the on my desktop audio. The ability to read those files later on down the post-production line. Workflow. There is now support for Final Cut Pro XML files and EDL exports. Support for Open Color I/O in both the Movie Render Queue and the Viewports. Camera cut for warm-up. This allows you to evaluate and to speed up the process. These new enhancements to the engine makes high quality media export much easier than before, keeping the importance of post production further down the line. Cool. Yeah, I can definitely see why that's useful. It's a rather massive um, shift in the whole concept of using Unreal. New workflows, several new workflows, Final Cut Pro XML, EDLs, Open Color, IO, integration. And what's really neat about this is like when releases like this happen, you really have to rethink like the whole direction of our courses and what we're trying to teach and where should we go be going with it. And that's why it's nice to have people like Justin um, who really have the inside scoop of what's happening here, helping us to give direction about where we're going with our next, you know, course changes. Um, it's just amazing how fast it's changing. And you have to really pick your battles in terms of which features you think will actually get adopted by the industry and which ones are just going to, you know, take forever for them to adopt. But um, if if any of this makes compositor's life much job much quicker like you can get the job done in a fraction of the time it's it's just gonna switch night and day because it's everybody's gonna be like well i can do this for like a tenth of your cost uh exr compression settings Except for the images, EXR image exports. Hmm. Remove all the, uh, what else do we have in there? Rendering deferred. Rendering. There's a lot of, uh, 
language there that I'm not familiar with. Because <laughs> I'm like, what? Nonlinear animation tools. Oh, here we go. Nonlinear animation tools uh, allow you to quickly create, modify, join, blend animation assets in order to create new animations and cinematics. Improves workflows using reusing and creating animations. Particularly useful for virtual production. Interesting. See, they already, you can take animations and blend them, so they must have done something different that really allows you to make it better. Blending sequences together predictably and non-destructively. Okay, blending sequences together, I don't remember doing that. You could blend animations together. So that's... I don't even understand how that works. That's awesome. Um... Root motion solutions now integrate with gameplay more seamlessly. Root motion solutions. Wow. With gameplay more seamlessly. Now that, don't even know, they're not really explaining it very well, but that's pretty neat. It's always been really hard. Even in our one of our streams, we did a root motion animation of that zombie crawling towards us. And uh, it was a real pain to try to get that to work. I don't know if that has anything to do with sequencer because it's talking about integrating with gameplay. But uh, curious to know what's going on there. Ability to edit individual bones in a skeletal scratch structure through sequencer. Ability to edit individual bones in a skeletal structure. In sequencer. Okay. Alright. It's like the beginning of how you do the uh, rigging tools. So you can just off do some offset, like it would be, I guess, like motion capture, blended layers. Hey, look, the editor finally showed up. 7,000 shaders. It actually happened. Uh, all right, we'll just let that calculate for a bit longer. Uh, I can't believe... Uh, can you share that link, please, Simon? Uh, how about I just show you where I found it? <laughs> Because <laughs> I, I won't be able to probably share the link because it'll probably just get muted. I went to Unreal Engine and you scroll to the very bottom and then it says Unreal Engine 4.26 releases. That took me to, well, basically that page. And then at the bottom of this was the button that let me do it. There it is. See release notes. There you go. Plus, that might be useful for people that are just watching the video. Uh, root motion. Okay, so it was enhanced and streamlined various sequencer tools to facilitate non-linear editing. All right, I'm not sure what that means. It's pretty vague. That's where I'm at. Okay, cool. Sounds good. All right, we're going to get more instructional video. Without needing to return to the DCC tool, these animation clips are biomechanically accurate animations. Looping and branching options have also been added to control rigs, allowing animators to create collections hey, it's the of control items, rig which system. can then be looped through using fewer control nodes to achieve similar animation. The sequencer animation tools now allow for blending animations together by matching bones up from each animation and modifying the root motion of an animation clip. While working on animation clips and sequencer, artists can visualize root motion as well as the skeletons of each clip, making it easier to match them up. Animation clips can now be worked on directly in one of two ways, via an FK control rig or by baking a custom built control rig into an animation clip. Once an FK control rig has been created, every bone can be edited and keyframed in Sequencer without needing to go back to a DCC tool. Keyframes and curves can be filtered and adjusted. This lets animators modify current animation clips or even create all new animation sequences which can then be saved and linked to the Sequencer track. Making changes to linked animation sequences in Sequencer will automatically adjust the animation sequence to match. By leveraging inversion or the backward solver in a control rig graph, a custom control rig can be baked onto a skeletal mesh. 
This allows for intuitive animation. <laughs> this is pretty intense. By allowing the artist I'm having to trouble keeping control up. curves rather than each individual bone. When importing from DCC tools via FBX, Unreal now supports importing control data and sparse curves. The import process allows for name-based matching and mapping to control rig types. Sequencer animation is now easier than ever, providing intuitive and powerful rigging and animation tools, allowing animators to spend less time going back and forth between Unreal and an external animation tool. Animators will now be able to create believable, control rig-based sequencer animation in less time and with great results. Cool. It's the dream. It's the dream we've been all talking about. And it's actually happening. Amazing. That was pretty complicated, though. I mean, there was some pretty complex stuff going on that they were trying to explain. I'm like, whoa, what are you doing? Especially when you got into this part. I'm like, what? Is these, these are each joint. You've got each keyframe for each joint that's animating. It looks like it's all been baked in, probably because they did that blending, which causes it to be baked. And then they're like, oh, you can filter out the keys so it's not so busy. And you're like, okay. Which is good, because, you know, you want to do that. Um, so you're, it's, I don't know. I mean, this is, these are normal workflows, but also uh, uh, approaching it in not a completely familiar way. So it's going to take a while before I get kind of my head wrapped around um, what, uh, what that workflow is to do, it, like, to get really get comfortable with animating. But here you go. This is a perfect example of how an animator's job is changing. You know, this is huge, and that could be, like, very much a tool that you should start learning because <laughs> it may be how we do animations very soon. I don't know. It's it's easy to kind of say that, but it's it's possible. It's also possible that there's some real hiccups here that, you know, once you start practicing, you'll realize that it's really challenging, but um, it will probably improve over the years as well. So I says, wouldn't it be easier just to animate a Maya than import, then import to Unreal 4? Well, he just, at the end of the video, literally said, you don't have to, it's easier to not have to import it into UE4. <laughs> like, you made the argument that he exactly said the opposite to. Um, it might be easier for you because those are your comfort zones, but in theory, not having to go back and forth and having your IK, FK rig set up inside of Unreal for you already, like, I mean... You as an animator don't have to create the IKFK rig. That would be created by the rigger. So you would just have this as your control set. Now make an animation. So you're sitting in Unreal animating it. But you're getting to see like the actual final results and the final lighting. Um, but you're working in sequencer where you're dropping your keys uh, as opposed to a Maya timeline. And uh, I don't know, this whole blending of, of um, scenes together is interesting. Uh, you could do like a looping run animation inside a sequencer and then do like the standing idle in sequencer and then blend them as two animations together uh, and then it would be run to a stop and then you would use some of the tools that they had like keeping the foot pivoted down which is something that you can do in motion builder really nice um, so that when it runs to stop it doesn't there's no feet sliding so I guess sequencer anim files can be you represent your animations instead of animation assets they would be like sequencer files i'm that's what i'm just pulling out of that based on what i'm understanding here and it makes sense in theory as a you know technique but um the real question is how hard is it to animate in this interface we'll have to play with it in the streams ahead and uh and see what it's like i mean we could if we had a demo rig like this we could try it today but um I don't know. I feel like I'm not going to get very deep into that in 45 minutes. It's a, it's definitely a different thought process. I mean, and I kind of expected that when Unreal kind of brought in a whole new rigging system. Like, just us playing with the control rig, where we're like, whoa, this is totally different than what I'm used to. So this goes from a jog to a run. It's transitioning from one animation file to one animation file. This is not sequencer files. From what I can tell, although they're not telling me what it is, but they're using the foot pivot to make sure that that is the point that you're transitioning from to make sure that the feet don't slide. Otherwise, if you just do a straight up blend, you're going to get some kind of foot slide. And this is a feature that um, 
that you can do in story mode and motion builder, but you know, it's easier just to do it in Unreal if you can. Marcus says, Simon, do you think opening my file in 4.26 might resolve the issues of 4.25.4? Um, I haven't looked at your issues yet, Marcus. Uh, I think chances are the issues you're having are solvable in 4.254. That's where I'm first expecting the solution to be. Uh, until I fully understand what your problem is, so I can't really confirm that it's possible that you've found an issue that I've never seen before. Um, you, if it's 4.260, you're probably going to find new problems. I bet you it's going to be a little crazy. They did do seven previous, so you know I bet you it's fairly stable. But uh, be aware that every time they, especially when they drop these huge changes, there's always going to be something that used to work and now doesn't work as we have seen oh you know what it might fix and we should check out is if it uh it got rid of that that gap in the bsp brushes where there's a little seam line on the bottom of all the subtraction volumes that would be interesting to find out what about the tiny things like the white lines on the bsp splitting perfect it's like we said that together at once same thing yeah, we should try it. See what it see what it does. I really feel like Unreal needs to fix that one because that's not something that you can just sort of like change. You know, there's no workaround for it, from what I can tell. Um, import animation control on control rig in sequence or experimental. Import control animation onto control rig in sequencer. You can now import sparse animation data from transforms in a DCC rig onto a control rig in sequencer through FBX. This means you no longer restricted to just importing skeletal animation data in sequencer. Oh, okay. I don't know what a DCC rig is. I don't know if that's really obvious to most people, but for me, I don't know. Hey, Sean. Hey, thanks for joining us, Sean. Um, it's going good. We're just having our minds blown as we look at 4.26 here. Or at least that's what's happening to me. It's a very Christmassy kind of like festive unwrapping of gifts here as we look through the releases. <laughs> Sarah says, gotta get ready for class. Oh yeah, that's normal. Um, but lurking off and on. Sounds good. Thanks Sarah for joining us. Appreciate your contributions of thoughts. And uh, we'll see what else we got through here. Uh, control rig, select import control rig FBX. To import FBX data through the control rig dat track, import control rig FBX. You can specify what controls to import and then you can filter options for how the animation curves map to the controls. So I don't know, I, I assume what you mean, what that means is you have to have a control rig that looks very similar and acts very similar in like, let's say Maya and then you export it i don't know what a dc i should really find out what a DD, dcc rig is i'm hearing little noises but i don't know what that is what am i doing here oh i'm getting messages from steam <laughs> i'm like what does that mean what's on my stream that's happening right now never heard messages from streams texting or uh steam's chat very often so it's like I'm not even familiar with it this is not what I thought it was gonna be a DCC rig um what else do I call it control rig animation flexible rigging for VFX and feature film DCC agnostic framework portable real-time rigs for virtual reality Abstracting rigging concepts, future proof framework design. Oh, this seems like something I should know about. It's a different, maybe it's a way that you can do rigging in a, in a different approach that matches with how um, the rigging works in Unreal. It's this whole, like, it's creating the rig on every tick instead of having it all baked in. 
like you do in Maya. Kraken tool, generating a rig that can run an Autodesk Maya, also version. So I guess you need to really be smart about how you've done your rig in order for it to be able to export and import into Unreal. This is just me guessing. I don't know if that's true or not. But uh seems like it's a whole different rigging approach. Lots of learning to do in there still. Or you can just export any rig as a TCC rig. I'm not sure. That might be possible too. We present uh, work recently under uh, Pinocchio and the VFX animated features by transitioning to a fully modular DCC agnostic framework. There you go. That's kind of confirming what I'm just thinking about. We enable rigs to be built across a number of host applications and leverage a variety of evaluation backends. This in turn allows us to target different stages of our pipeline more effectively. Cool. I didn't know anything about this. By offering high performance to animators, an easy prototype of riggers, while retaining the ability to share assets and companies in need. Ah, that's cool. That's a very filmy thing, I guess. I don't know. Maybe it's just a... Not say it needs to be filmy, but maybe that's where I was missing the boat on that one. So that's cool. So it transforms a DCZ rig into the control rig in Sequencer, and you can just map in the controls as needed. I'll have to look in to see if you can do a DCZ rig in Maya somehow. Maybe we can try it out. Although at that point you're like, well, who cares? Just make the rig in Unreal. <laughs> like save yourself all the trouble. But oh, I guess the advantage is you can animate in Maya or you can animate in Unreal and you can still mix them together. And you're not restricted from one type of rig or the other. I don't know. Very interesting. End displays and improvements. Uh, Marksell says, I haven't, still haven't gotten to trying that Voxel plugin. Oh yeah, no, neither have I. Not saying that's uh, irrelevant or anything. Voxels as a game playing technique is definitely a thing. They've been talking about it for a long time, and it does look like it works pretty good. It has, I would say, if you're going to really use it though, you really want to make sure that you're utilizing that feature. Like, you know, the whole point of Voxels is the fact that you can, like, separate and dig into the terrain and cut into things and it still has like substance beneath it um so it would really make sense if your game mechanic matched that technique or somehow whatever your concept is that you're trying to do was taking advantage of that uh End display improvements. In this release, we have added several features to end display to improve the user experience to be able to render to different kinds of display surfaces. Oh, here we go. Now we're talking about the end display stuff. Uh, oh, interesting. We got multiple display ports to configure your virtual background, I assume. which is a, a skill set that may um, be well worth if you're interested in getting into that kind of thing. It's, uh, this is the cutting edge knowledge that you want to know in order to uh, start applying to these positions that are probably going to be way more easier to easier of jobs to get than you uh, may ever get in life. <laughs> like When you're at these cutting edge technologies, it's like there's this vacuum that happens and you just, if you can get in on it and get your head around it, you can get yourself started and then once you're working you're just way ahead of the competition nobody can really keep up with you once you're actually in the um in the circle uh we have added multi gpu support for nvidia nv link uh specify which gpu your system is using i think we were talking about that before that was uh Client GPU for each monitor. Wow, that's awesome. That's the roof. That's cool. It's the ceiling, I should say. Whoa, wow, what is this going to happen? 
integration. We have in, an added integration in support to Visio technology in Unreal for projector warping and soft edge blending on highly complex surfaces. Wow, that is crazy. Uh, you can load warp and blend files in native formats using the following end display projection policies. That looks pretty distorted from this camera perspective, but I wonder if the person standing there, that looks correct for them. It would be interesting. These are like curved floors too, it looks like. I don't really understand projector systems. <laughs> like, why is she not being hit by the projectors? I may not be understanding this feature very well. Uh, end display dome projection. Whoa. We've added integration for supporting dome projection tools. Wow, this is so crazy. I've never seen them ever add anything like this before. Uh, projector warping for soft edge blending and massive dome surfaces. See, this is, uh, I guess this is very much directly related to, uh, these are the dome surfaces, right? Like this is the same concept, but you can apply it to all these other random situations that I've never really considered before. I've added, uh, deterministic rendering is chaos. Okay, this is where the features become more obscure. <laughs> we, we go from, ooh, these sensational features to, uh, what? what is it doing? What's changed? So we may just jump over to Unreal soon. Uh, In-camera VFX template, use the in-camera VFX Unreal template action. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think my brain is getting full. Two-handed interaction. Oh, two-handed interaction. Cool. This is another thing. I've, I've always wanted to buy a VR system so that I can start playing with these VR features, but I'm always like, ah, geez, if I buy one, am I actually going to use it? But I will one day. What's this? Chaos Physics Beta Lightweight Physics Simulation for, for used in Fortnite was released. Beta release. Uh, available for developers. Physics is on a default with Unreal 4.26 available at in the Epic Launcher and will be depreciated in the future when Chaos Physics is enabled by default. There you go. Physics is uh, NVIDIA's one that's been around forever. Chaos is Unreal's one that is uh, working its way to be replacing Physics. Although Chaos Physics, uh, Chaos has always been like a destructible thing, so I'm not sure why this is being released as a beta right now. I must have missed something there. Gash says, Quest goes all right. Quest 2. Not sure what you're saying. Oh, oh, um, the uh, VR one. Do you have a Oculus Quest 2? You have an Oculus Quest 2? Oh, are you the one that got it as a promo thing? Forget how that works again. <laughs> it's coming back to me. Have you done anything with the uh, Oculus Quest, Dash? And by goes all right, I actually getting the feeling it's a eh review. Okay. Got a yep on that. Chaos Arban, Chaos Cloth, Chaos Ragdoll, Chaos Destruction. I guess Chaos Destruction was the one that's been around for a while. All of the features available from the Chaos Beta release. One day they're going to have the whole thing. Oh, Chaos Vehicle. Oh, there's a lot of new stuff. I guess this is using... Uh, it's They've had this car driving demo for a while um and the car physics has always been meh they're all right it's a little artificial so i'm not sure if this is now using the chaos vehicle maybe it's a lot better 
This isn't really video explaining to me anything about whether it's better or not. It's just showing that it works. He's like driving on very careful flat terrain. I guess he is angling a little bit here and there. Nothing um, too exciting though. In fact, hasn't even touched a wall or anything. I'm not sure if their motivation is to get themselves away from physics, physics, or whether it's so that they're all independent, Unreal own stuff. Not sure. I mean, that probably is it. I just, I'm not sure if what this funny story is that might go on there. Gash says, yeah, I did get it. This would be the Oculus Quest 2. Yeah, the Oculus Quest is definitely on uh, potential list of things that I'm looking at because I think Facebook's doing a pretty good job of really pushing that technology um, so it is it is pretty neat but literally if I owned one this entire year I wouldn't have touched it because I'm just flat out trying to take care of a lot of things going on in the school so um, but that might change next year so we'll see where we're going with it uh, we at 830 okay so we still got uh, 30 minutes left let's not try to get let's actually try to use unreal a little bit here I don't want to completely spend my entire time reading documentation because that surely does not fit in an exciting world although this is pretty fun exciting documentation I gotta admit um, Marcus says next year is game jams yeah that's right and uh, we'll see how that goes. It might even be, uh, I think Scott Bayless is going to start uh, becoming a big part of those game jams. So we'll see how that goes down. We'll see what, um, Scott's got this amazing background of working on uh, lots of amazing things. He's been in the industry for like forever. Um, and uh, so he's a really interesting person to be part of these game jams. If he can, if he is, I mean, I really hope he does. Uh, it'll be really neat to... Uh, have someone with that much experience working with us. Uh, wow, there's a lot of stuff going on. Sean says, what do you think about Valve Index? The Valve Index. Okay, let me get back to that. I don't know what the Valve Index is. I assume it's something to do with Valve's VR. Uh, Gash says Simon is getting paid for browsing the net. Yes, <laughs> just browsing the net, guys. What do you want me to do? Um, <laughs> you want me to do stuff? I'm just looking at fun things here. Intel Pro <laughs> That's really funny. Intel Process GPU texture sharing. What is it doubling your resolution? I don't know what that's trying to tell me. Texture share, new plugin that efficiently sends and receives GPU textures and buffers between Unreal Engine and any other process by bypassing the CPU. Texture share supports synchronizing some me mechanics. Okay, I don't understand that one. All right, guys, let's keep moving. Oh, uh, let's find out what this uh, valve, sh valve uh, index is because I actually uh, don't know what that means. Um, oh, there we go. That's what it is. I got some learning to do. Marcus, I learned more from him reading it than talking about it than I would have been in <laughs> my attention span trying to read it. This is true. I'm probably in the same boat. Because you guys are all watching, I'm like, I'm very carefully like paying attention to each detail and trying to explain it and understand it. But sometimes you just kind of like going, ooh, pretty pictures, and then you just scroll through it all. Um, all right. Oh, this is, looks pretty cool. Is this a... Uh, Oh no, it's still VR. I just thought because it's in the screen whether it was going to be AR. Or am I wrong? Maybe there is an AR system here. It requires a PC. It requires base stations and PC with the controllers. Uh, index headset. Wait, wait, wait. This is the whole kit. This is with the controllers. This is just a headset. We'll be looking out for prices. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's, that's about normal. Um, 
valve index headset. So it's good to remember that they're called a valve index. I gotta start using that word in my uh, keep that in my brain for next time somebody talks about it. I know what they're talking about. I, I wonder why why is the screen all like shiny and stuff? What's what's up with that? What are they trying to do there? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm totally up for getting Valve's products as well. I'm not, definitely not, like, you know, all about Oculus, but uh, there's a lot of pros and cons, and you just got to kind of sit there and think about it. If I'm developing, this might be a better solution. I don't know. Looks cool. Anyways, thanks for sharing that with me. All right, let me uh, work my way back to where I've got Unreal that's still compiling shaders. Oh, my goodness. It's actually getting really warm in my room because it's been compiling shaders this whole time. <laughs> like my CPU is like nice and hot right now. All right. Oh, we still got live link open. That's funny. I remembered it from last time. Oh, look, I've opened it twice. Oh my goodness. I've opened it twice. No wonder it's taking forever to load. 4.25. Oh, this is the old one. Let's not do that. We want the new one. Wow, you can really see the difference. Uh, the compiled shaders are not done yet. Ah, right. So I had this crazy thought that I was like, what I was going to do with this was um, basically, uh, well, it seems to be frozen right now, um, was mix snow with it. That was my idea. Uh, I learned more. Oh, sorry, I'm reading too far away. I still want to play Half Life Alex. Yeah, I actually have Half Life Alex on my Steam because I get all Valve games for free because of crazy code that I got when I was working at Rock City. I get all the Valve games for free, so I have it ready to go. I just haven't played it. Uh, use it. Uh, Marcus says use it to melt snow. Yeah. I was literally thinking I should open my window and just let the really cold air come into my room and cool it off. Um, no, I'm okay. I actually kind of like when it's a little warmer. Except for my computer probably disagrees. Yeah. I can tell that it's... I have it set up so that the colors change based on my temperature of my CPU. So right now it's like a very reddish-orange. <laughs> Which means it's... It's pumping some heat right now. Uh, okay. Com shaders will be probably done pretty soon. Okay, then what am I going to do here? Do I want to look for new features in the 4.26? There's plenty of features, but that might be a little bit slow, and it almost questions why I even cr open this. Oh, I guess I'll just I'll open up a new level. We'll start there. Um, yeah, we'll do a new folder. We'll do it uh, testing and we'll make a new level. Um, we'll do this one as the water one. I think the water one is the most interesting. But I really don't know if I'm going to be able to get very far with this because I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, totally blank scene. Actually, let's not do that kind of scene. Let's do... Uh, one that actually has a sky dome and everything in it. All right. So I don't know. We'll see how far I go. The other idea is to bring in some of the snow assets and talk about snow elements, uh, bring it into my cabin. Uh, I am almost finished compiling all the shaders, so that's pretty cool. Sean says, so do you have Half-Life 3? <laughs> yeah, because I'm hooked up to uh, Valve directly. I get the, the beta version of Half-Life 3 before everyone else does. <laughs> yeah, I wish. Actually, the funny, I got the, I got the code in the deal in, um, I don't know, 2012 or something? And uh, and the only game that came out since then was like this Half Life Alex and maybe I don't know there might have been another one Portal Two maybe came out uh, 
But there hasn't been very many games. They, they haven't come out with very much. Maybe Dota or something, but I've never actually played those ones, so... It's, uh... It hasn't really done me a lot. But I do have, like, every version of Half-Life, every version of Counter-Strike, every version of, like, um... Left 4 Dead. Is it Left 4 Dead? Yeah. So, it's kind of cool that way. I get all these, like, old games that, that are still pretty good nowadays. Uh, let's see here. How am I going to find this water? I don't even know where to look. Oh, maybe if I click on one of these links here, we can get ourselves a tutorial. And then I can, uh, at least be a little less boring. Let's see, is there any, like, links that you can do when you see the water tutorial? Click on it. Now it takes me to the picture. Sorry, I'm just going to see if I can do this quickly here. John says, oh man, I just started playing Half-Life. Oh, the original Half-Life? It's crazy how it still holds up today. Yeah, that was a great concept. Like a great game concept. Um, where it's just like a really compelling storyline. You're right though. And it's a great, great introduction too. You really feel like, you know, that... that fact that you're on like the train in and you're feeling like you're going deep and yeah it's just really well made whoa room asset editor did i not see this where are all these coming from here missed that one that is a really nice hair room there uh sky cloud lighting we could talk about cloud lighting so many amazing features what are we going to look at first? I'm going to stick to my water idea here. Real-time skylight capture. Oh, a real-time skylight capture? Skylighting now supports real-time capture scene for atmosphere, clouds, light fog. Whoa, that's awesome. Improves on and is faster than the blueprint node. Real-time capture mode on the skylight performs all computational and GPU without any CPU real readback resolving hitches that could happen during capturing scene. Sweet. So you can have reflections that are matching to your environment even though your time of day is changing. I don't really know how to utilize that, but it's, it's, anyway. MOBA games, massive online B, I forget what B stands for. Games aren't my thing, sadly. I guess this is the, going back to the Dota thing. Um, and, yep, the game has such a solid concept that it's very impressive. Yeah. That's yeah, great. It's great for people to play it, like, and, well, people who sort of miss that generation and go back and play it. And if they're still, like, engaged, is uh, is really cool. Even though the graphics are ridiculously low quality, like they're still 3D, but they're just like, yeah, really gone down to a minimal on what you can, polygons you can handle. Massive online battle arena. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. And yeah, that does still fit with the same concept. Uh, wa oh, here it is. Water, 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 water. Landscape editing layers. Okay, that's not what I wanted. I don't think this is the best way to find it, unfortunately. I thought there was going to be a link here that was going to take me to something that would give me a tutorial. Landscape editor levels. Edit landscape height maps. Eight procedures. All right, so that's, I guess, for making the rivers and stuff. Oh, water. There we go. This. Oh, I missed it. Uh, Marcus says, I bought a game called Dusk recently. Sounds familiar. Its graphics are terrible, but it's fun. Very nostalgic feel. John says, water is wet. <laughs> that's probably... <laughs> I must have said something really dumb. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> like where what is water feel like uh let me just see what dusk is because i really that sounds so familiar right now oh that's not helping me <laughs> K 
game desk desk on steam oh wow i got a good marking uh let's go to the wikipedia when did it come out oh it came out recently it's just designed to be retro oh it got a really good rating though let me go check it out on steam then Oh man, this is like Quake. Like old school Quake. Does it have a nine inch nails soundtrack as well? <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, I'm always like, Quake, nine inch nails. I guess because they got the big nine inch nail boxes as well as the music. Um. Oh, Sean says, no, nah, the water is wet is just a little online joke. Oh, is it? Wow, oh, man. Whoosh. Totally missed that one. Um, Marcus said, I did it. Uh, I did that when I Googled it, too. Oh, yeah, I thought it was uh, Quake. Quake Doom game. Yeah, that's right. If you if you want some nostalgic Quake Doom gameplay, there you go. That's what it is. Gash says, AC Valhalla Val Val is awesome. Not a fan of AC. I'm not an AC fan, but it's very cool. I'm such an idiot. I don't know what AC Valhalla is. I'm sure I'm supposed to know. It's is it like Nine Inch Nails. Is that is that a thing? Like I actually don't. I know the music. I just don't know anything about them. So if that was if that was a connection there. Oh, Assassin's Creed. Okay, good. Oh yeah, Valhalla. Yeah, yeah. Right. I never saw you talk about. Yeah, I'm not really an AC fan. Uh, Assassin's Creed fan either. But I just know that's a. Uh, uh, that newest game, I have a cousin who got really excited about it, and I'm like, really? So I am, I am curious to know what they're doing that's making it so cool. What is this stream talking about? <laughs> Are you saying we, we're losing track of what we're going on here? All right, we're trying to do some water here. That's what I wanted to do. Um, <laughs> we're, <laughs> we, were, we were talking about Unreal. Um, we're looking at some cool features. We got a little lost on some game talk, which I guess is relevant. Uh, but we're trying to do some, we're trying to try out some of the new features for 4.26, which one of them is this water. Uh, I've only got like about 10 more minutes on this stream left. And, uh, I want to at least do something cool and productive besides just reading all the release notes. Uh, and what I'm looking for, oh, it's a plugin. That's what I need to do. So let's get this plugin loaded. Enable. Restart now. We finally got all the shaders compiled. It really did take pretty much the entire stream to get my shaders compiled and the uh and the project loaded. So that was ridiculous. Uh Marcus says, is this 2019 Quake or remake? We talking about uh, dusk? Maybe. Could be. Uh, Sean says Assassin's Creed games aren't just aren't the same anymore. Okay, so so we have some agreement with Assassin's Creed on that one. I I kind of felt like they oversaturated their market, but I don't know. People kept buying it, so I can't really blame them. Oh man, it's taking forever to open the project again. What is the deal? Oh, here it goes. Uh, Marcus says, I saw a Quake that was released in 2019. I saw a Quake that was released in 2019. Oh, maybe it was. I do remember what you're talking about, actually. I was wondering if they, they made a remake. Yeah, I, I kind of remember that, too. I don't think it... Oh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. It'll be interesting to know though if that dusk has anything to do with it. It seems like they may have jumped on the bandwagon if that was the case, if they're two different separate projects. It's like, oh look, we made a game that looks like it too. Alright, so we have the water plugin now. Let's go back to the water level. Uh and follow our tutorial a little more here. Let's see what we've got here. Water tool set is in uh that's the plugins. 
uh, sports creation of large body of water. Um, wow, we're compiling 3,000 shaders again now that I've turned on this plugin. Working water body actors. Oh, geez. Okay. Introduces a spline based workflow, emphasizes uh, uh, iterative design, ease of use for rivers, lakes, and other types of water. So we got water body custom, water body exclusive volume, water body island, lake, ocean, river. We should try the ocean, I guess. What's this exclusive? Oh, exclusion volume. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's pretty handy, actually. You can have, like, a place where the water doesn't exist. That's usually a big problem with water. You make a giant plane of water, and then if you want to, like, get... Like, if you have a ship that's inside of the water, how do you get the water to stay outside of the ship? Otherwise, it's just, like, you've got it cutting through the geometry. That's probably pretty handy. Um... Marcus will look into it. Oh, Sean says, Quake Champions of our call. 2019 remake release was not received well. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's tough to pull back these old uh, deathmatch games. But, I don't know. I mean, Doom, I guess, came out, another release, and uh, Unreal Tournament was, like, something that Unreal did right away as an open source thing. You can download Unreal Tournament for free if you want, but... It never really got like into a massively popular thing, as far as I know. Uh, Abby, you sorry, I don't know how to say your name very well. Um, Ab Abby, Abby, you. We need bake the simulation first? Question mark. No, I. This all real time. This is what's so amazing. This is why, like, we had this amazing... The beginning of the stream where all our minds are getting blown because we're, like, doing things that it never could do in real time. And we're like, what? Oh, my goodness. This is awesome. So water is definitely one of them. Um, we get lots of cool... I wish I could promise you that I'm going to make some amazing things happen right now, but I really have no idea uh, what I'm doing. <laughs> so... We've got a, we've got a few steps of of uh, frustrating boringness going on here. Abby, all right, awesome. I'll call you Abby. That that sounds a lot better. That works nicely, actually. Um, sorry, I've lost my page of where I was going here. Is this it? Is this the tutorial? Here they're talking about how to do the splines, which might be the better ones right now. Ah, uh, Gerstner waves. To apply to that fluid simulations game physics right that's very cool rendering features underwater post process yeah that would be fun to do that ocean oceans are a closed loop spline to shape your landscape generating a may island all right let's i i wonder if i need to have like um a landscape in there first so let's just throw in a landscape hopefully my defaults are fairly normal <laughs> and we'll uh, we'll start sculpting the um, surface of it I think it's got to compile the shaders always compiling I've only got like eight minutes. Come on, shaders, compile. Uh, Marcus. Okay, that's okay, Simon. It's brand new. Oh, okay. Oh, for in terms of me trying to get the water right. Yeah. And it's just how I do my streams. I'm always like, what am I doing? Uh, Mark says, we just expect you to figure it out faster than us. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. It's a nice dream. Danny says, where's the water? Yeah, exactly. Where is the water? Come on, water. Oh, I'm ready to paint. Okay. That was one of the first things I wanted to try to do. Let's see if we sink it down. No, I was really hoping it was just going to pick up the fact that we're right on the same plane here. Uh, let's grab our ocean for a minute here. 
Where is it? Body of water. And our details. Curve settings. Water material, underwater post process material. There's a lot of stuff here I don't know anything about. Effects landscape, checkbox is on. And let's just delete it from in here and we'll create it again. Oh yeah, come on. Gone, but it's still there. Jump back in order to place actors and we'll try it again. Water Awadi, oh no. Water Awadi, oh boy. Let's try that with the, oh, there we go. Now we got some water on the outside. I, I drag it onto the actual landscape object, which like still a little bit surprised why I'm not getting water on the, on the depressions here. And speed this up for a sec here. Whoa. Whoa, I went underwater. What's the deal here? It's above the land. Why am I able to see above the water? Oh man, I'm so bummed out that I'm not getting a cool water here. Sarah says, I'm back and my editor is stuck at 45%. <laughs> that sounds like what I was doing for the entire stream. Is that because it's updated? Uh, yeah, mine's stuck on 45% for at least 45 minutes before it finally opened. Uh, and since they're compiling shaders, etc. Yeah, it's just two steps. It's like when it loads up, it sticks. And then when it's finally loaded, then it's got to compile like thousands of shaders. Of course, I happen to pick a project that has lots of shaders. Sarah, did you ever figure out how to do the water? Did this water thing ever work for you on your preview version? Did you ever get like this particular type of water working? Because uh, it would be cool if I could just get something, anything. This water's looking real nice. <laughs> Thanks, Danny. I appreciate your compliment. Water body custom, water body exclusion, water body island. Let's try dragging another thing. See, we still got these two oceans here. I don't know why I'm still getting them. We're not actually getting rid of them. What do you want me to do? I gotta go back to my tutorial for three seconds here. Uh, Sarah says, yes. Is it the lake? I got the lake and the rivers going. Did not try the lake. No. I don't know why the... Oh, I'm still in sculpt mode here. Maybe that has something to do with it. <clears throat> Close that. Ah, there. Now I can delete these objects. All right, let's try this again. We'll do the lake. Come on, lake. What am I not doing? Do I need a special material? River. Oh, here we go. Now we're getting something. I feel like that's what it was discussing in the uh, tutorial was like, you start with the river and then it works like the first thing I talked about was using the river all right I, I guess I'm not really gonna get anything fun here unfortunately maybe we can see something with the compilers finished shader no the shaders can finish compiling I must be getting tired um, and then I'll have to do a little more care into uh, figuring out how this works I didn't really get anything done I said I was going to do. Like, I wanted to do um, snowflakes and get my backdrop. Well, I don't know if I said that, but I wanted to get my backdrop changed today. But uh, I spent so much time reading all this release notes, it took me forever. I really would like to see the water work. <laughs> it would be so nice. Oh, uh, well. Well, there you go. Hopefully that inspires you guys to try it and figure it out, too. Uh, there's lots of interesting things that... Um, we need to find out about and learn about uh, and uh, I definitely for sure will be coming back to uh, talking about how to do control rigs and that kind of thing um, 
Oh, I got some screenshots from on Slack. And uh, I'll take a look at that, Sarah. Cash has to go. Um, so thanks for showing up, Cash. Appreciate all your comments. Um, and actually, I probably need to wrap it up too. I'm at the last minute here. So I'll just, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll leave it here. We won't even bother trying to see what the final compile is because it probably won't be very awesome. But um, in, the, in the weeks ahead, I'm definitely going to take a look at how to do the rigging thing. Uh, try to do some of our own rigs inside of Unreal Engine and, and see what that animation workflow is inside of Sequencer because I think that's very close to what I'm familiar with and I'm very curious to try to learn how to do that. So we'll see what we can do that. Maybe we can bring our fox back in again and try to animate him in. Um, ah, that's a good idea. I like that idea. Uh, we'll try to rig him up and animate him in, uh, in Unreal, which would be really crazy. So hopefully that, uh, that was at least useful and, and fun to watch for you guys. I know um, <laughs> it was a strange stream. But I'll leave it there. Let me know if you guys have any thoughts or anything you want me to do uh, and uh, moving forward in the next streams. And uh, I'll catch you guys again next week. All right. Take care, everybody.